With me is Belarus Foreign Minister to talk about India and Belarus relationship. Uh, uh, there have been engagement uh, in past few days. Uh, sir, welcome to Vyond. My first question to you is, how do you see this relationship between the two countries? We consider India as a very important partner for Belarus uh, in this region. And we would like to raise the level of our cooperation to the strategic partnership. Uh, a few days ago, I met my colleague, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of India in Tajikistan during the meeting of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and uh, we agreed how to proceed further. We agreed to uh, develop our political dialogue. Of course, the pandemic situation influences the uh, contacts, let's say, the dynamic of contacts between our countries, but we agreed to work on uh, exchange of visits at the highest level, when the situation will allow to do that. We agreed to strengthen our ties between the ministries of foreign affairs, to organize consultations uh, on different issues uh, between our ministries. We, Belarus, decided to expand our diplomatic presence in India. We are going to open the Consul General in Mumbai, uh, and which is uh, very important, uh, important uh, 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 economic center, financial center uh, in India, and of course we would like to to be on the spot in order to have direct contacts with the relevant partners, uh, Indian partners in this uh, region. We, uh, uh, we, our trade turnover is growing, and we, but uh, some 600 million dollars. I think this is not the potential uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of our relations. Our potential is much more bigger, and we should do our best in order to raise this turn uh, uh, turnover uh, to higher figures. So um, we, there are a lot of projects which are being implemented right now in the field of pharmaceutical, in the field of industry, in the field of uh, oil um, uh, extraction, in the field of... Uh, of, of mining industry, etc., etc. Uh, it is important uh, to, after the situation will improve, I mean the pandemic situation will improve, it is important to hold the next meeting of the Joint Economic Commission and to discuss new projects which could be mutually beneficial uh, and which could uh, raise the turnover uh, between our countries and uh, which could uh, deepen and strengthen uh, the cooperation between Belarus and India in all fields. We are ready to do that. Mm. Uh, ready to do that, new projects. Uh, are these projects uh, focusing on connectivity? How do you see connectivity as a way forward, connectivity being the new geopolitical currency? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, of course, uh, all the projects uh, which are being implemented between Belarus and India, they contribute, uh, let's say, to the connectivity between the states. And this is one of the main principles which is very important for the international relations right now. So um, we know the uh, principal position of India on, uh, on a number of uh, international issues. And I must say that we fully support India uh, in uh, in the international organizations beca because uh, our position, our approach uh, coincides with the approach of India. So this is a very important principle and of course uh, uh, we should focus uh, on, on, on the implementation of a number of uh, projects in order to increase the connectivity between uh, the different uh, countries and this is what we need in order to strengthen the international order uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, uh, what's your policy towards uh, the reformation of the United Nations Security Council? India wants to be a permanent member of the council. The Indian Prime Minister has spoken about it. Uh, India has been sp speaking about it for a long time now. Uh, India is currently the non-permanent member at the Security Council. Um, how do you see both countries engaging at the United Nations? Uh, we supported India uh, when uh, it decided to join the uh, Security Council as the non-permanent member. Uh, and as you know, uh, there are a lot of disputes right now about the uh, modernization of the United Nations organization. 
with the aim to adapt this organization uh, to the new challenges uh, and threats which arise in the world every day. And, uh, but unfortunately, at the same time, there are a lot also a lot of difficulties around uh, this intention to modernize the organi organization, to reform, uh, to, uh, to organize reforms in the organization, also including the Security Council. Uh, we, we are ready to work with any state uh, because we understand that the UN should be uh, more active, should, be, uh, should act more uh, quickly, uh, should be strengthened, and of course the, uh, the Security Council uh, as the main, one of the main organs, bodies of, of this uh, organization also should be strengthened and uh, the, uh, it should be different states which play important role in the world should be represented in this body. Mm -hmm. uh, of course we will join, will support any decision which will be achieved uh, by consensus uh, with regard to the reforming of the Security Council and the United Nations organization in general. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, right now the the, the uh, proposals uh, of uh, our approaches towards the uh, real, uh, modification of the organizations, uh, our approaches, uh, I mean, of India and uh, of Belarus do correspond uh, in, many, in many things. Mm -hmm. uh, do correspond in many things. Uh, uh, sir, talking about uh, the recently held ZEPAD exercises, uh, uh, the exercises uh, also saw participation of India in uh, the part where the exercises were in Russia. How can there be a collaboration uh, between India, Belarus and Russia? Because uh, for uh, India-Russia relationship is a much celebrated relationship, a very strong relationship, and you are a key ally of Russia. Uh, maybe we are key ally. We, are, uh, we both, I mean, Belarus and Russia are members of the so-called Union uh, State. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have a common uh, policy in industry, in agriculture, in uh, other spheres. So we really uh, very closely work with Russia uh, and this is mutually beneficial. Both uh, our citizens enjoy the same equal rights and I think that th this is the greatest achievement uh, for both uh, states, Belarus uh, and Russia. Uh, of course, we do have very close cooper military cooperation, I mean, between Belarus uh, and, and Russia, because, uh, and I think that we should unite our, our efforts, because today we see how many threats arise in our region, in the world in general, and uh, I, 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 I'm in doubt uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that one state uh, can uh, fight uh, together alone uh, against, for instance, uh, terrorism, extremism, uh, or against uh, some other uh, challenges. So we should unite our efforts in order to achieve success uh, in fighting against uh, threats which uh, surround us. I mean, terrorism, uh, uh, extremism, etc., uh, etc. Et so we welcome the uh, the, the readiness of India uh, to participate in the military exercises in, in Russia, because I think the exchange of experience, including also in the military field, it is uh, it could be helpful uh, in order to uh, to oppose to the uh, possible uh, threats uh, for 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 all, for all of our of our states. Uh, so now coming to uh, the regional dynamics, the region, your region, uh, we have seen uh, the the issues between your neighbors and between your country. Uh, the Lithuanian side has been saying that uh, there has been increased influx of illegal migrants. Uh, uh, your side has been saying also your uh, view. What do you think about the situation when it comes to you and your neighbors, a lot of European countries uh, and your relationship? You know, uh we should start maybe uh, shortly fr from 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 the past, from the last year, because last year uh, some some 
people abroad uh, uh, decided to organize the color revolution in Belarus mm -hmm. uh, after the presidential elections. Uh, this uh, revolution failed. Uh, today, the Belarus as a state is developing uh, dynamically. The GDP is growing. Our exports uh, are growing. So, and uh, there is a constitutional process uh, organized uh, in Belarus uh, with the aim to amend the constitution and to uh, redistribute the power between different branches. Uh, I think that the, we should proceed further in an evolutionary way. Not the revolution was never helpful and will not be helpful for the development of the state and for the maintaining and strengthening the statehood of, of Belarus. Unfortunately, uh, some, 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 some forces abroad and uh, the uh, representatives of the European Union do not understand really what is going on in Belarus. Uh, and uh, they, they, they introduced some uh, restrictive measures against Belarus uh, and today they try to accuse Belarus in organizing, as you mentioned, uh, this uh, flow of illegal migrants to the Western countries. Uh, this is absolutely, uh, they absolutely lie, this is uh, uh, absolutely uh, false, and uh, I must, and why? Uh, there were a lot of foreigners who came uh, to Belarus also in the past. Uh, they, uh, from Iraq, from the Near East, they came for medical treatment, they came as tourists, and we, it is impossible for Belarus as a small state to organize uh, such flow of illegal migrants to, uh, to, to, to the Western countries. Uh, but after the uh, events which I, uh, which I mentioned about, uh, uh, the European Union stopped financing of all the projects uh, aimed at uh, strengthening uh, the border infrastructure between Belarus and the Western countries, Lithuania, Poland, Latvia, uh, etc. Uh, they stopped also uh, to fulfill their obligations within the framework of the readmission agreement which was signed last year. And this agreement uh, uh, foresaw that we uh, foresaw the construction of shelters uh, for illegal migrants in Belarus. They stopped all the agreements. We proposed to organize consultations with the European Union on this issue, on the issue of illegal migrants, but they refused. And of course, uh, uh, we are not a geopolitical actor. We are not so strong uh, as Russia, for instance, as China, as India. And we were forced to, uh, to focus uh, our efforts, let's say, uh, on, on, on the fields uh, which are important uh, in order to neutralize the negative consequences of uh, sanctions imposed on Belarus by uh, the European Union. So we continue uh, uh, to fulfill our obligations uh, on the, bo uh, I mean, uh, with regard to uh, border gardening. And uh, we, for instance, this year we have arrested uh, more than a dozen of people who dealt with the um, uh, illegal migration. We stopped uh, some 15 channels of illegal migration. But uh, again, uh, due to the sanctions imposed on Belarus, due, the, due to the absence of a dialogue between Belarus and the European Union, due to the pressure uh, on Belarus uh, uh, from uh, the European Union, it is impossible, I'm frank with you, to fulfill all the obligation as it was uh, uh, as it was previously mm -hmm. uh, but we proposed to our partners to organize the dialogue uh, on this issue and I'm I hope that sooner or later they will understand that uh, only through joint efforts we can achieve success also in this with regard to that but uh, they have invited these migrants from uh, the other countries and they don't want to stay in Belarus they don't, don't want they want to uh, to to be somewhere in Germany or in Sweden or in France but uh, the, the 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 actions uh, which uh, for instance Polish and Lithuanian uh, border guards uh, 
undertake against these illegal migrants, they are unacceptable because they beat them. Some of them were killed just a few days ago uh, in Poland and were thrown over the border to the uh, Belarusian territory. This is not, the, it does not correspond with the this theory of uh, human rights. Uh, they absolutely violate uh, human rights, and it is, from my point of view, absolutely unacceptable for the uh, civilized uh, society. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, would you like to have dialogue with European Union? Are you keen on that? And especially in the backdrop of the development we saw, uh, the airspace being, in a sense, uh, closed, the European flights not flowing over it, uh, primarily because of the arrest of a certain blogger. We always uh, said that we are for the dialogue and we are ready to have a dialogue. But they refuse to have a dialogue today with the representatives uh, of the government. They have the dialogue only with the uh, people from the opposition who left Belarus and uh, who call just for sanctions and who does not represent, who uh, do not represent the real will of the people in Belarus. So they really don't know the situation in Belarus, uh, and this is the main mistake. Uh, with regard to the, this incident with the plane, uh, Ryanair uh, aircraft, um, which happened in May uh, this year, I must say that we were very absolutely surprised by the fact that uh, the European Union and some other Western countries introduced sanctions against Belarus immediately the next day uh, after this incident. Though we immediately invited uh, the uh, ICAO, International Civil uh, Aviation uh, Organization, uh, to investigate uh, this case and to make uh, its conclusions. Uh, but we see that this matter is very much politicized the delegation of ICAO came only two months later. They were not interested to get uh, all the documents which will, uh, which are important for the investigation. Uh, and again, I think that you should uh, punish uh, this or that subject after you have investigated the case, after you have uh, got all the inf uh, necessary important information and after you came uh, you come to the a certain conclusion that you are guilty, you should be punished, we impose san sanctions on you. But in this case sanctions were imposed on Belarus uh, immediately after this incident and it shows that this uh, case is absolutely politicized. Uh, sooner or later, I'm sure that the truth will uh, prevail and uh, uh, many people will understand that they have done, uh, that, that, that their actions were uh, absolutely uh, incorrect uh, with regard to, to Belarus. Mm -hmm. uh, but are you hopeful that things will be back to normal in terms of the relationship between Belarus and uh, the European countries uh, in the backdrop of so many developments, whether it's the arrest of the blogger or earlier opposition case? Oh, hope that uh, dies last. Uh, I am optimist. I hope that sooner or later uh, there will be an understanding uh, that, I mean, coming from our partners, that uh, they uh, should not only uh, speak, uh, they should not only mm, not only speak in terms of of of, uh, of, of, of some labels or uh, imposing some labels on on uh, on, on Belarus and uh, its authorities. They uh, should uh, really try uh, to understand what is going on really in Belarus. Today, the people of Belarus uh, are u uh, united uh, against their intention uh, to develop Belarus as an independent state, as a state, uh, uh, and they are ready to move forward in an evolutionary way, as I said. Mm -hmm. Today, we are working on the constitutional process. This is important. But uh, if uh, the, our European partners will refuse to understand that, 
to understand the ne real necessity of uh, maintaining the sovereignty, independence, and statehood of Belarus. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, then it could be possible to have a dialogue with them and to uh, restore uh, the certain level of trust in uh, our relations. I cannot say that uh, they are ready today, but uh, I met here in New York uh, a number of my European colleagues. They asked me to, uh, to, to uh, keep it uh, confidentially, uh, and they told me that there is, a uh, there is an understanding that we should find uh, some, some, some ways out of this deadlock situation. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, this is good, and sooner or later more understanding will come, and uh, every, both parts will, uh, will decide, let's say, to restore the previous level of trust in our relations. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. So uh, that was uh, the Belarus Foreign Minister speaking to Vion on several issues. Uh, uh, focus, of course, on India-Belarus relationship, how this relationship can go, grow forward, and how Belarus will be soon opening a consulate in the Indian financial city of Mumbai. With video journalist Neeraj Patel, Siddhant Sibbal for Vion in New York, U.S.